Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sean Lee, and I will be presenting the paper uh, View Independent Generative Adversarial Networks for Novel View Synthesis. And this paper was presented in IEEE International Conference on Computer Vision. So the overview of this presentation is first I'll go into the problem, then the related works, the motivation for the paper, the proposed solution, the evaluation and results, and finally the conclusion. So the overall problem that this paper is trying to address is novel view synthesis. And novel view synthesis is basically uh, given a 2D image, synthesize a new 2D image from an arbitrary viewpoint. So as you can see in this example that I provided, you're given a source pose, the source image, and a target pose. And the objective is to synthetically create this new target image. So there are multiple different categories in the related workspace for this uh, novel view synthesis problem. The first category are geometry-based approaches. And for geometry-based approaches, basically they take a 2D image and estimate a 3D um, representation with this 2D image and then use this 3D representation to develop this 2D novel view. So in this example I provided here, the paper is um, taking the 2D image and encoding it. And using this encoding representation, they'll pass it through a structure generator. And this structure generator will basically generate n viewpoints, which they will then form a 3D point cloud with. And then this 3D point cloud is then used to create these 2D novel views. Now the problem with these geometry-based approaches is estimating the 3D structure from a 2D image doesn't perform well on complicated textures and structures. So the next uh, category of related works is learned-based approaches. And for this, they have um, some approaches that use convolutional neural nets. And then they have some approaches that use uh, GANs. So first, we'll go into convolutional neural nets. So for that approach, they attempt to train a convolutional neural net to learn the mapping function between a source image and the target image. So as you can see in this example here, they pass an input view image into an encoder, which extracts the relevant features of that input view. And then they also apply a viewpoint transformation encoding in latent space. And this viewpoint transformation is just a 19D vector uh, of the azimuth positions from negative 180 to 180. And then they combine these encodings and pass it back into the decoder. And this decoder reassembles the image as a appearance flow field, which they then use with the pixel locations of the input view. And they can create a synthesized view using this, appear or this appearance flow field and the original pixels from the input view. Now, the problem with the CNN approaches are generating 2D images without considering 3D structure doesn't generalize very well, uh, particularly when the viewpoints aren't seen in the training set. So the next approach is general adversarial networks. Um, so the main approach with GANs is they want to take the original image, they want to encode it, and then in latent space, they're going to apply the target pose and then regenerate the image and attempt to fool a uh, discriminator and optimize it that way. So in this example here, this is the DR GAN, which is another uh, kind of comparison that they end up using later on in the paper. So as you can see, they input an image, and then they encode this into latent space with a pose, and they apply some noise. Then they pass it through the decoder, which generates the image. And then they pass it into a, or a discriminator. And this discriminator in particular classifies three different things. First, it classifies if the image is real or fake. It classifies the pose based on the sample. And then finally, it classifies the ID. And the ID here is a uh, facial ID. Uh, the DR GAN example is kind of optimized for the facial recognition space. So it's just the uh, person in the photo itself. So the problem with the GAN approaches are, again, the 3D structure isn't represented. Uh, therefore, the GAN doesn't generalize well, especially when the viewpoint isn't seen in the training set. So that leads to the main motivation of this paper. And the main motivation is to propose an improved method for novel view synthesis. And to do this, the authors came up with this architecture. And it's in an encoder-decoder-based general adversarial network. 
uh, called the VIGAN. And the general idea of their approach is that any 2D image is a projection of the 3D world. Therefore, if you can find features that are viewpoint invariant, these are important intrinsic properties of the 3D world. So their model is attempting to learn these 3D properties and then utilize them to generate a new target view. So just some background, uh, they actually do pass in the camera pose into this architecture. And the camera pose just consists of a three by three rotation matrix, a three by one shifting vector, and then they reshape the rotation matrix to a nine by one vector and then concatenate it with the shifting vector to form a 12 by one vector. And now I'll kind of go into the different aspects of the overall architecture. The first is the encoder. And as you can see here, uh, the inputs to this encoder are the source image and the source pose. And they are passed into the encoder to generate these view independent features. Now two kind of uh, notes on the encoder itself. The, the, in the ideal world, all of these 3D features would be in the source image, but that's not always going to be the case because not all the features might be visible. So to do that, to overcome this, the authors talk about how they trained the encoder with different viewpoints. And they kind of use the analogy that humans uh, basically infer structure based on similar structures in memory. The second point is they use a function called a coordinate convolution. And they do this to store the 2D or the 2D images coordinates in the convolution filter. And to go more, a little more into that, the VI GAN needs these 2D coordinates in order to learn these 3D structures. And by nature, CNNs are spatially invariant, which means that the uh, CNN itself isn't sensitive to the isn't sensitive to the object's position in the image itself. Therefore, to overcome this, they do coordinate convolution, which basically adds these two additional channels to the convolutional filter to store the coordinates so that the convolutional filter knows where it is in Cartesian space. So the next component of this architecture is the decoder. And as you can see, the decoder takes in the view independent features and a target pose and then it generates this new synthetic target image. And some notes here with the decoder is this MD network is just an embedded network to account for the difference in channel number between the pose and the view independent features. And this other term here is an adaptive instance normalization. So adaptive instance normalization is uh, basically, it's an extension of instance normalization and it aligns the channel wise mean and variance of the input and a style. And this is usually used in style transfer. Um, in this particular case, the mean and variance of the instance normalization layer are inferred by the camera pose instead of the feature map. So that's kind of the difference from regular instance normalization. So now I'll kind of go into the loss functions associated with this architecture. The first loss function is pretty straightforward. It's view independence loss. And basically, this is the loss associated by um, running two different poses or two different images with poses through the encoder and getting the view independent features. And they're basically trying to optimize the difference between these features because they want to find all the viewpoint invariant features. So in theory, they, could find, they should be able to have the identical features from two different poses. The next um, category of loss is image reconstruction loss. So the first image reconstruction loss they use is pixel level loss and perceptive loss. And they do this on the target image itself. So to kind of run through the path, they have this source image and a source pose. They pass it into the encoder to generate the view independent features for the source image. And then they pass it into the decoder and apply the target pose in latent space. And then they do this to generate the target image. So with the target image, they then do the pixel level loss with the ground truth, as well as perceptive loss by running it in a VGG 16 network and extracting the features for it. So the other uh, image reconstruction losses that they have are the input reconstruction loss. And that's depicted by this reconstruction constraint here. And basically with this, 
they are inputting the source image and the source pose into the encoder, extracting the view independent features. And then at the decoding level, instead of applying the target pose, they are applying the source pose. And this in basically generates the source image again. And they are basically comparing the loss between the ground truth source image and the rendered source image itself. And finally, the last image reconstru reconstruction loss is cycle restriction. And that's depicted by this basically this full path and similar to the other reconstruction losses, again, we'll start with the source pose and the uh, source pose and the source image, pass it into the encoder, get the view independent features, apply the target pose to get the synth synthetic target image. And then in turn, they pass this synthetically created target image back into the decoder with the target pose to get the view independent features again. And then they use this synthetic target image to pass the features of that with the source pose to then generate the source pose again. So that, that's kind of complicated, but basically they're taking the source pose to generate a target image, and then they're using the target image to basically cycle back and regenerate the source image. And they compute the loss at the pixel level and perspective level, perceptive level at, of uh, this cycle restriction as well. So with this particular architecture, there are two, GAN, or two discriminators. And the first discriminator uh, uses the Wurzelstein GAN gradient penalty. And these are the functions for the loss functions associated with the discriminator and the generator. Um, some notes here is this PF term represents the uh, synthetic image. This PR term represents the real image. This LGP term is the gradient penalty itself. And the lambda is a weight on that gradient penalty. So the next discriminator uh, implements post prediction loss. And this post prediction loss, the discriminator uh, is a classifier that's based on the pose. So given a sample, it classifies a pose. And this discriminator is basically used to evaluate that the image that is actually generated is as close to the target pose as possible. So now to get into the evaluation and results of this paper. They use three different data sets for this paper. The first data set is called ShapeNet. And ShapeNet is a 3D model based uh, data set. And as you can see here, I put the top 100 categories in the ShapeNet data set. And they have different 3D models, such as a chair, a lamp, a table. And they have varying numbers of these 3D models in this data set. The next data set they use is the MultiPy data set which is an extension of the Pi data set. And this is human faces at different angles. Uh, and they have 15 different camera angles at head height for this uh, data set itself. The next data set is the 300W-LP data set, which is a synthetic expansion of the 300W data set, um, consisting of 120,000 images. And this is another uh, human face data set that is used for the continuous face. Uh, just to go into some of the evaluation matrix they use, uh, first one was pixel-wise error, or L1 error. The next one was the structural similarity index, which measures the quality of the images based on luminosity, contrast, and structure. Uh, it's on a scale from 0 to 1, where 1 means the photos are identical. And the last matrix they use is the Frechet Inception Distance, or the FID. This measures the quality of the generated image. And the lower the FID is, the closer the distance of the domains of the real and the generated image are. So to go into some of the experience, experiments that they conducted, the first was an abolition experiment where they uh, basically extracted some of the optimizations that they did throughout their research and tested the overall error level. So in this particular case, they removed view independence loss, the post prediction loss, the coordinate convolution, and the adaptive instance normalization. And as you can see, once they remove these optimizations, the error significantly increases. The next experiment that they conducted was a camera pose experiment. So with this, they used images from the MultiPy data set. And in this data set, they have aligned and unaligned images. 
Aligned images are just images that are cropped around the face while unaligned are non-cropped images. And for these two experiments, the first one was on the encoder. And basically this experiment was to test varying accuracies of pose. So um, basically noisy pose readings. And as you can see, as the pose reading gets more noisy, uh, kind of around the plus or minus 10 threshold, the error level significantly increases. And they actually found that the margin of error on uh, modern camera pose evaluation methods will never exceed this plus or minus 10 threshold. So this error level will never actually be seen in a normal use case. And the second experiment they conducted was on the decoder. And basically this experiment was changing the difference between the source image or the source image and pose and the target pose. So the difference in degrees is between the source and the target. Uh, so as you can see, after about 90 degrees, the error level significantly increases. And this is mostly due to once you have a larger difference in degrees, you're actually having features on the model that aren't visible to the original pose. So it's hard to synthetically generate an image of a greater degree variance. Um, additionally to these experiments, they conducted applications. So the first application is discrete face rotation. And face rotation is aimed to uh, synthesize a human face into another view. And here they use the MultiPy dataset again. And they use the unaligned and aligned images again. And they compare it against the CR GAN and the DR GAN, which are two models that are optimized for this specific discrete face rotation space. And as you can see, they outperformed both of them, uh, some by a, a significant margin. And here are just some of the photos from their experiments. And uh, the top level here is the ground truth. The middle is the VI GAN, which is, was their approach. The second layer was the CR GAN, or the third layer was the CR GAN, and the last layer was the DR GAN. And as you can see, their model actually predicts the ground truth pretty well compared to the other models. And these are the evaluations of the unaligned data set as well. And again, here's the, the top level is the ground truth. The second level is the VI GAN, which was their approach. The third level is the CR GAN, and the last level is the DR GAN. And as you can see again, their model um, is very close to the ground truth. Even in uh, certain features, such as this man's glasses, it does a pretty good job of rendering them. So the next application that they tested was continuous face rotation. And for this, they used the 300W-LP dataset. And they tested against the PRNet, which again is another model that is optimized for this specific continuous face rotation space. And again, they outperformed the kind of the cutting edge model for this continuous face rotation. And here are some of the images from their experiment. And here the top level is the ground truth. The second level is the VI GAN or their approach. And the last level is the PRNet. And again, you can see the VI GAN does a really good job of rendering similar to the ground truth. Uh, the other model doesn't do a very good job with the background. So the last application that they do is object rotation, which basically is uh, synthetically creating a novel view from, for a certain object. And in this case, they use the ShapeNet data set. And uh, they used three different categories from the ShapeNet. They used a chair, a sofa, and a bench. And they compared against the MVD, or MV3D and the appearance flow, or AF models. And again, they outperformed both of those models in object rotation as well. And here are some additional photos from their experiments with object rotation. And as you can see here, their model uh, gets some very high level features, such as like these chair legs, while the other models aren't uh, able to render these. And the conclusion is the paper proposes a technique for utilizing a 3D view synthesis network to generate a 2D target view. Uh, the paper demonstrates how the proposed methods outperform existing techniques for discrete face rotation, continuous face rotation, and object rotation. And here are some of the references I used for some of the images in the presentation.